Hello, I'm Andrew Jupin. Eric Siska. Steven Zadak. And we hate movies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies on the Sideshow Network. If you're new to the program, thank you for tuning in. This week, I feel like we're getting some letters this well, week. Well, yeah, relax, everyone. Hold on, hold on a second. Chill out. I don't love this movie, but it's 1997's Face Off, directed by John Woo. Uh, someone, someone, someone on Twitter was like, oh, you know, I think honestly, or somewhere on the internet, maybe it wasn't Twitter. You know, honestly, I think it's his uh, best American movie. And I was like, that's not saying anything. No. You know what I mean? Like... Look at that lineup. Broken Arrow, Wind Talkers. They're all winners. But honestly, Wind Talkers is no. not a winner. All right. That was Paycheck it. or Payback? Or is Paycheck? You both? It's paycheck. paycheck. <laughs> ben Affleck tries to get payback in Paycheck. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, this is just a really fun movie to look at because it's silly. To as, look at. It's really silly. Uh, mm-hmm. It's two and a half hours long. It's 17 minutes longer than Star Wars. <laughs> you got the exact minute count. I did. I looked it, I looked it up. But That's outrageous. I mean, here's the thing. You very correctly, Steve, said look at. Mm-hmm. Because to listen to this movie is to like gently stick a Q-tip in your ear and then lay down Q-tip side down on a pillow. Because, I mean, this dialogue... And the performances spitting out these words, it's just terrible. And, and the musical choices are downright Doubtfurian. Like, there's just <laughs> the musical cues. is They do Papa's Got a Brand New yeah. Bag in this one, too. And do if, they ever. If you don't know, the, the basic plot is John Travolta and Nick Cage end up switching faces. <laughs> and, of course, we all know this is based, this is a remake of the the uh, face-off movie starring Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> um, and both are great. <laughs> Could you imagine that, though? What, if there was a face-off movie with Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart? Yeah. I think the only time they appeared on screen together was in Philadelphia Story. And, so that's kind of like face-off. <laughs> Faces off, 1945. <laughs> no, mother, this isn't my face. It's James's face. <laughs> Well, now, God damn your face. <laughs> I want to take his face off. Well, you know what? It's interesting you mentioned Jimmy Stewart because Nick Cage is very close to Jimmy Stewart a lot of the time with, with his di- like some of his dialogue right. readings, especially when he does have his face off. He doesn't have lips, so he's like, I want to take, <laughs> take his face Oh, you're totally right. He does sound a little, you know, Jimmy Stewart esque in this movie. For, yeah, for, maybe that was it. That's it popped into my head while I was watching this, and I'm like, yeah. Now this movie was so massive, like when it came out, and then I didn't see this in theaters, but I must oh, everybody have, saw it on home video, baby. I must have rented this movie like twelve to fifteen times, mm-hmm. right? I forgot where I was. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's what I, I, I little experiment. If you have not seen this movie, quickly pause the episode. Just tweet at us, at WHM Podcast, and say, I've never seen this. Because that would surprise me. Yeah. It would honestly surprise me. It would shock the shit out of me. Because, it's, <laughs> well, I mean, because, <laughs> it's not super surprising, though, because we're like we're the right age for this movie. I can imagine if you're like five to ten years younger, it's like, face off, which one's that? What's Nick Cage doing? Is that the one with the rock? Like, no, that's actually the rock. Is that the Jeez. one with the, the airplane? No, that's Con Air. Well, I mean, it, there's bound to be people who haven't seen this movie because also you, every once in a while you come, come across one of these bozos that are like, yeah, I never saw Star Wars. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they got a laser sword. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm just more curious how many of our listeners have not seen Face Off because, I mean, I feel like also this is another movie that's on cable a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. Cute. You're you're putting up with this a lot on you Sunday know why afternoons. They, they like it on cable because it takes up the whole afternoon. You start it at 2 o'clock, you put in commercials, it's over at 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> then, you're, then you're in prime time, baby. Um, I often mix up this and uh, Broken Arrow. I mean, both really? are John Woo. I mean, not mix it up, but yeah. it's just like some of the scenes kind of blend together. Yeah. Ma- mainly because John Travolta is... One of Hollywood's biggest hams. Oh, it's a ham sandwich in this movie. It's insane. Like, 
the some of the original casting for this movie we had of course the Stallone Schwarzenegger possibility Harrison Ford and Michael Douglas was another possibility Jesus. but you managed to wrangle the two hammiest actors working in the, the 1990s thing is, the premise is so dumb that i think that's the way you have to go with it you know if if someone if they were being more serious with this movie yeah. It would not work as well, I don't think. But that's the thing. Sometimes this movie does get serious, and it's like that hospital scene where he's like, See, rem- yeah, you know, yeah. and it's just like, oh, man, just fucking shoot something that, and get a bird out that's here. That's the <laughs> shit that needed to be cut out, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what's impossible, and that's why I, I was saying to that guy online, like, you'd be hard-pressed to find, like, a totally awesome American John Woo movie because John Woo's style, this, like, artful action movie thing – doesn't translate out of Hong Kong filmmaking. Like, it doesn't make sense. And when you watch this movie, you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, there's no way John Travolta and Nicolas Cage are doing all these flips in the air while shooting guns. Like, and it's all this hyper choreography and everything. It doesn't look good. It's not suave. It's not artful. It's just Nicolas Cage and John Travolta farting around for almost three hours. Almost three hours. Can we start with what I think could have been a better movie, which is the beginning of this movie? Merry Go Round Assassination. I was going to say Freddie Mercury Child Assassin. <laughs> that mustache he's got. <laughs> it's just because he's got his like Nicolas Cage Caesar ish haircut throughout this entire bad movie. Yeah. That was like his 90s haircut. I think he's got a similar haircut in Snake Eyes, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a piece, in case anyone was curious. It's, it's a real piece. But it's like a piece that's managed. It looks like a carpet sample on his head. It's <laughs> disgusting. And he's got this mustache and like these little sunglasses. <laughs> I'm killing kids. I'll make the rocking world go round. <laughs> and I don't like Star Wars. That was an actual Queen lyric. <laughs> you got a, you got a real hard on for Star Wars. I, yeah, I'm sorry. That's just that's just that's just me. Eric was getting bullied on the internet at work before he came here. Yeah, he's always in a mood when he gets bullied about Star Wars at work. <laughs> so you know we're on a carousel, and John uh, Nicholas Cage, Caster Troy, is ready yeah. to shoot and kill Sean Arster because Caster Troy is your standard 90s movie villain, the international white super terrorist. Right, yeah. yeah. Which Perfect is, for a diehard movie. Mm-hmm, Not so much here. And that name, that's Caesar-ish as well. Well, it's super. Yeah, yeah. Right, a little on the nose, too, if you're looking for it. Yeah, Julius Caesar, Marcus Aurelius, Castor Troy was there. <laughs> His brother Pollux we meet a little bit later in this yeah. movie. Oh, Castor and Pollux. Jesus oh, Christ. But yeah, so he's trying to assassinate John Travolta because, again, it's a thing where... Sean Archer, John Travolta's character, is such a fantastic FBI agent. Oh, he's the best. And he's such a hot shit FBI agent. Oh, it's so hot. That, like, he has this globe-circling blood feud with with this terrorist, right? Like, when do you see this? Where, like, so, like someone is going after one specific FBI agent, Nobody right? Nobody like, knows who's on their case. You know what I mean? Like, no one's, <laughs> or, like, fucking with their family. Like, maybe the mafia sometimes. Yeah, I mean, Hannibal I, Lecter. Yeah. If you're good enough, you yeah. know, you know? Yeah. Everyone else is just amateurs. But this is a super terrorist. But why isn't Nicolas Cage, like, arch enemies with Margaret Cho's character? She's on the same team. He's fairly indifferent to her. <laughs> <laughs> To be quite honest. Or uh, Bunny Colvin from The Wire. He's even higher up in the FBI than John Travolta. Well, or the old man Lazaro, uh, the what, the old dad from Fargo. This guy's great in this movie. <laughs> oh, man. That guy's had it up to here with John Travolta. <laughs> He's like the only character that was murdered for being an asshole. Because in, in Fargo, like that deal's going great. And then all of a sudden he's like, no, no, not let me see my daughter. And it's like, well, Steve Buscemi's like, look, dude, I don't want to kill you, but now I have to because you're being an asshole. You're breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. So hilariously mustachioed Nicolas Cage shoots John Travolta in the back and it goes through him. And I guess shoots this kid in the face. You don't really see what's going on. He assassinates this kid. Yeah. On a merry-go-round. And so then it's six years later, and we're we're still we're hot on the trail of, and we don't know what the inciting crime was. Oh yeah, well, like, well I mean, it's just it's years and oh years of being. Yeah, in a, 
Yeah, there was a shot of of I, I took a glance over Sean Archer's uh, shoulder and I <laughs> I saw his computer screen and I was going through all the super crimes the super terrorists Castro Troy's committed. Oh, and one of them was um, it was uh, killing the uh, Croatian ambassador. Yes, and wow, I'm like, is that that important? <laughs> I know it's a country and it's great, but. Is it that important? Like the ambassador? I mean, that's what I want to know. Like, was this ambassador crooked? So Nicolas Cage, we cut to him six years later. He's dressed up as a priest. Oh, man. And, you know, in the first scene, it's like, it looks like you're going to see a stoic action movie. Like the kid gets killed. And you're like, oh, fuck. This is, the stakes yeah. are high. And can I tell you why that first scene works? Because nobody's talking. Yeah, it's uh, dialogue true. Yeah, that's true. But it's it's got stones. It kills a kid. You love child death in cinema, Andrew Jupin. And I this love happens it. Oh, within yeah. like the first three minutes. Oh, no. It's awesome. Like I said, all the action in this movie is awesome. And this first scene is beautiful because it's just like perfect artsy orchestral music. You got a suave ass assassin with a mustache and tiny sunglasses. Oh, yeah. And then this this gunshot goes off. The kids, it's all done really well. Mm -hmm. And then the second people start talking, you can start flushing toilets left and right. <laughs> so he's dressed up like a priest. He's undercover. He's wanted by everyone in the world. And don't wear a mask or like a wig or anything. Yeah. Just put a priest outfit on. And he's dancing. Like he puts his bomb in the LA Convention Center and he starts dancing because there's a choir or whatever. And he starts like groping this young girl. It's, I mean, and this girl, people are going to swarm. It. Like the second a priest goes up behind a girl and goes, eh, la, 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 and grabs her. People have swarmed on him. I mean, it's this huge concert. They just presume that he's singing along with the choir. Yeah. He's acting like they're doing a fantastic job with this hymn. Meanwhile, he's like groping this chick and licking her ear. And this girl's all about it. And mm -hmm. you're just like, wow, Castor Troy, rock star terrorist. <laughs> But then, you know, he could have gotten swarmed, and maybe they just moved him to a different parish. <laughs> you know, just, that's what happened. That's, yeah. Now, here's my question, though. Because when he sets this bomb, he sets it for, like, weeks in advance. <laughs> yes. Why not an hour? Because mm -hmm. we, we're told, like, the bomb, like, the blast radius is a mile. Yeah. Right? Set it for an hour, go to the airport, get in your plane, and yeah. leave, and the bomb goes See, off. That's how it works, because uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'm thinking the janitor just threw out your bomb. <laughs> this last... Yeah, this is going to blow up Michael Massey's Garbage Island. <laughs> <laughs> this bomb... I mean, this movie takes place over at least two weeks. Can yes. we agree to that? Mm, yeah. And in the last, you know, I guess like day or so of this whole thing, three days maybe, Yeah. like Nicolas Cage... As John Travolta goes and defuses this bomb and gets all the credit for it. And granted, there is still another, like, hour and 15 minutes left of the movie. <laughs> but why wait that long? He has to say something like, like, when he goes to the jail later and he's trying to figure out what's going on. Like, oh, see you on the 18th. And I'm like, isn't it like the second? <laughs> it just It's well, so much time to wait for a bomb to go off. There's this weird thing where, like, there's somebody that paid them to do it and blah, blah, blah. We never see this organization at all. It's just shadowy figures somewhere oh is that true did i miss that Someone, yeah they're like they're oh, hired we're not, hands we're not gonna get our money because of something yeah everything castor troy does has a dollar sign in front of it that's right yeah you're totally right he's not fighting for like a cause or a creed he's fighting for a paycheck kind of terrorist and you know because uh john travolta is an emotionally shattered fbi agent <laughs> he's not very good at his job because yep. they, they get a hint they find out what plane he's going to be on and when he's going to be on it. And they actually have the presence of mind to put a, 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 an under, undercover agent on the plane. Right. But they don't have the presence of mind to fucking get them at the hangar. They have nope. to wait for this thing to start taking off nope. before they swarm. And we're getting ready to go to the airport. And this is like the first of, I mean, it's, it's endless. We could be here all day and all night reciting of the bad lines that John Travolta gives in this movie. Mm -hmm. But the first one is like he's... He's fighting with one of the superiors about whether or not Nicolas Cage is going to be present for this plane taking off because they know that Pollux Troy, yeah. the younger brother, has like rented this plane out and paid in cash and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, Pollux doesn't fly without Big Brother. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to listen to that shit for two and a half hours. Well, he also says you could brand the Fourth Amendment on my butt. There's, the <laughs> there's a couple of times where 
And we're saying fuck all throughout this movie. Oh, yeah. And there's a couple of times where butt is just placed in. And I was like, what What were you worried about at that point? That butt had to be used. We're going to tone it down, change some of these fucks to butts. <laughs> you can still shoot that kid in the face, but you get some butts changed from fucks. All right, we can get some cartoon breasts. All right, check mark for no reason. But you change that ass to butt. <laughs> so... What a shock. This whole thing goes south. This woman gets murdered. Nicolas Cage, like, <laughs> shoots her in the head and throws her off the plane. After shooting his tongue down her throat. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the famous peach. I could eat a peach for hours. That's uh-huh. very Jimmy Stewart. Too. I could eat a peach for hours. <laughs> oh, say, Sally. Look at that fine peach there. <laughs> like to, to take a bite out of that peach and just consume it. Mr. Potter hired me to blow up the L.A. Convention Center. <laughs> I wish I had a million dollars. Better kill John Travolta's son for it. <laughs> Hot dog! <laughs> oh, so he murders her, and like now we have the, this huge hangar fight, which, I mean, I think these action scenes mostly are great, oh, but yeah. there's always, like, and it's kind of, I really like that last Mission Impossible movie, but I felt the same way in that, that one, like, I start to tune out if an action scene's like maybe more than six minutes. It's got to be yes. a, it's yeah. like a pop song is what what you got from, from once it's like, and then this happens, and then this happens. And that's the thing. And what you realize is we're like almost a half an hour into this movie. We're, we're still just talking about faces. We're no. Not, we know nothing about faces. <laughs> no one has said the word face once at all. And we're in this airport hangar and he's still just trying to capture him. Mm-hmm. And you're looking at your watch like, when are they going to switch faces? Mm. I paid a ticket to see face swapping. This face is on. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. A bunch of FBI agents get murdered. And, you know, a lot of the henchmen that, you know, they have are murdered or whatever. And he's kidnapped. Or he, captured, rather. He's in front of, like, a jet engine or what, what have you. And yeah, he gets, like, blowback. Yeah, and he gets thrown in, like, he's in a coma, essentially. It That's is a great right. fight sequence, though, too, because you got just random people being shot by shotguns flying around the dude one of the dudes from pcu's playing an fbi agent in this movie yeah. he gets shot in the ear oh yeah which is pretty great was that also no correct me if i'm wrong was that also lewis carruthers from american psycho yes yes he, he's yep. in everything he's in he played johnny cash on lifetime uh he's <laughs> I think he's. Oh, a- he's in everything. <laughs> he played Johnny Cash on Lifetime. <laughs> That's a, he starred in that fucking movie. Hey, Steve, all right? was he on the Oprah Network too? <laughs> no, he was also on Big Love and so on. And yeah, so he was. Forth. He was in Big Love. Yeah. He's, in a, he's, he's in a lot of stuff. I think that dude might also write and or possibly direct stuff too. Sure, he seems like a very talented man. He's very talented at getting shot in the ear and then later the head in this movie. <laughs> oh man, that's a really good scene. <laughs> so they so the like f- John Travolta receives the first of two applauses he gets at work in this movie. Oh man, and this first one is awesome cuz they're like you captured Caster Troy, so Sean Archer. It's fucking. Well, great. everybody thinks he's dead. Like, there's like false information going oh, on. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. Oh, yeah. They're you're like, right. you killed that son of a bitch. They're like, yeah. They're, they're all cheering for him. And he grabs, he's like, you know, we're celebrating how many agents we lost, blah, blah, blah. And he goes in his office and he comes back. And he's like, no, okay, fine. And he grabs the champagne bottle and he's just like, he's like, all right, yeah. How about this? How about Anderson? And Janelli and Montgomery and Winners and he's just naming all these people that his dumb ass operation yep. got murdered. You know what? <laughs> yeah. It's all on you, John Travolta. Let them celebrate the victory. You fucked everything up. Mm-hmm. He's a terrible boss, and he's a terrible <laughs> father, and he's a <laughs> terrible husband. This guy's just plain rotten. So we're all celebrating, and we're like, we killed that son of a bitch. I can't believe it. We're so happy. And the good news is. Everything's gravy. And then, like, uh oh, <laughs> huge bomb in the convention center that's gonna go off. Of, well, huge bomb in LA. We don't know where it is. Right. It's gonna go off sometime eventually soon, maybe. And the only person left alive who knows the location of this bomb is little brother Pollux Troy, who's been, he's been arrested. He's in custody. But how are we gonna get Pollux to talk? And, and John Travolta. You know, thinks that through his like hardcore FBIing, mm-hmm. he can get some of the clan, the crew to talk and roll on presumably dead Nicolas Cage. And we've got like these shitty scenes of him interrogating 
uh, Nick Cassavetes, uh, the useless what's her face, Gina Gershon is. Whew, that you want to you want to cut twenty minutes out of this movie? Cut Gina Gershon right out. It's so useless. The only reason that character exists is so she can die, and then they can like adopt her son at the end of this movie. fucking replacement kid we'll get there but it's bullshit <laughs> nick casavetti's in this movie kind of looks like matt frewer with the bane serum <laughs> like he's like enormous and jacked and bald and he's got a really great burn on sean archer because he's like sean archer's like i want to fucking nail your ass to the wall and he's got this whole thing he's like what are you gonna do about that he's like How's your dead son and it's like a, <laughs> ooh, what a burn it's so great and like Travolta flips him over in this chair and is like putting a gun right to his mouth or whatever. So this is after all this interrogating, by the way, is after they have explained to him the face off program. Yes. Because oh my, the be- fucking it's oh, God. oh man, it's so stupid. But it's like <laughs> it's like so. So how can we do this? Well, the only person who knows where it is is Castor or Pollux Troy. Mm-hmm. And the only person he would talk to about it is Castor Troy, who's dead. And then like. Dude from Fargo and CCH Pounder are just like, actually, Nicolas Cage. Mm. And John Travolta is like, don't tell me. And you cut to this hospital bed. He's in a coma. God, God have you thought of doing like maybe a, a fake phone call? You know, <laughs> hey there, little brother. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, I'm alive. First I'm, t- <laughs> I'm on a I'm on a definitely not tapped phone. Or hey. How about a deal? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> we'll communicate your sentence. Tell us where the bomb is. We killed your brother. You know what I mean? Like, we'll call it a wash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Tell us where this bomb is. We'll call it a day. And you can go on to being... Well, I guess he's not good at being a terrorist. That's the other thing, too. <laughs> this guy's supposed to be, like, simple and not really all there. Yeah. With some hardcore American police work, you can get a false confession out of this guy and then get him to roll over on where this bomb is. Get a couple is. of phone books in a dark room. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but the, the, the quiet, genius person, you know, like this yeah. guy is, that's just silly putty in the hands of the right cop. <laughs> you can get whatever the fuck you want yeah. out of him. Yeah. <laughs> just stretch him a mile long. Yep. Will, no one's gonna care no no not at all no yeah. one's giving it that's the other thing too no one's giving a shit torture this guy Tor- you, you, you beat him half to death you get you get the uh info and then you shove him in a loony bin mm. or you know what you're the fbi just kill him to, to be fair guys this is clinton's america so you know Whoa. it's a little that's I true i don't remember those simpler times it's all blowjobs and albanian wars everything was wonderful <laughs> And a huge oh, budget surplus. That's why he killed the Croatian ambassador. <laughs> that's it. It was about Kosovo. And <laughs> so they're like, all right, we have the the only way that we can get this information is for you to cut your face off. We're going to cut his face off. We're going to slop it onto you. Nope. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. End of movie. Nope, not at all. And, and oh, the best ever movie reasoning is... And it, it can only be John Travolta yep. because he knows Castor Troy better than anybody. Nope. Get some, like, expendable-esque Suicide Squad dude to do the operation yep. and put a fucking earpiece in and John Travolta's listening to everything. Get an actor because you know what? You know who's you know what I'm really good at? Doing Excel files. You know what I'm not good at? Impersonating other people. <laughs> There's a difference in the skill sets. Or, or, or you get... Anyone else but John Travolta to do the experiment? Like, yeah. why? Why is he even on this case? He killed the caster. Try killed his son. He's an emotional wreck. This entire film. But you know, movies sometimes you gotta suspend suspend disbelief a little bit. Oh, you're suspending all of the disbeliefs for this movie. I'm actually in the middle of writing a think piece called the uh, the science of face off. Oh, you should definitely, yeah. I would yeah, love it, to re- finish. Yeah, my re- first draft is a JPEG of a toilet seat that somebody <laughs> pissed all over. You know, when you go to the gas station, and you're like, well, I can't even go to the bathroom. Uh, well, here, this, there's yeah. urine all over this toilet seat. I was excited. I thought this was more of a salon type of thing, but you're talking BuzzFeed. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's my BuzzFeed reel right there. The 10 signs you are unqualified for a face off operation. <laughs> It's 10 pictures of piss on a toilet. It's 10 <laughs> gifs of piss on a toilet. Please. And <laughs> so he agrees. Like, they can't find anything. And they're like, no. okay, here are the ground rules. You can't tell your wife for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're going to put you inside the super prison again, which we'll get to. And we won't tell the guards. 
for no reason. We won't tell Margaret Cho. We won't tell anybody except for CCH Pounder, the guy from The Wire, and the doctor. That's the only three people yep. in the universe. That's it. That's it. That, Those are the only ones. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and also, wouldn't it take like a month or three or five for that face to heal? <laughs> yes. Oh, this this is some next day shit. Yeah, He's it got is. this it's thing the, on. It's and like the, the originally they were going to place this movie in the future, which would make so much more sense. Sure, but yeah. John Woo was like, oh. You know, I want the emotional drama to feel more real, so it's got to be present day. Oh, you know no. what about emotional drama? I <laughs> cry every time I watch The Wrath of Khan, okay? <laughs> and every I, fucking time. And I cry every time I watch Demolition Man. <laughs> so just put it in that Demolition Man future. Exactly. But here's the thing. If you are going to do this, if you are not going to set this in the future, where sure, fine, we may have fucking face-off power, mm-hmm. Okay. Then you have to take out the super jail that you send him to. Because this is a goddamn future jail in this movie. Well, it's uh, very uh, reminiscent of where we send terrorists now. (laughs) Except without the whole, like, magnetic boots thing. Yeah. Can we talk about the operation? We have to talk about the operation. Oh, for sure. Oh, God, it's gorgeous. Because I got an impression of the operation, (laughs) actually, I've I've been working on. So, you know, they're they're lasering out their faces, and they bring down this, like, face grabber apparatus <laughs> and it it just does this great thunk yeah. i just love that it's just like you can get right it just sucks your face off and it's a nice thunk you know what it is it's like back in the day when you do a drive through at a bank and you'd put the tube yes. through it. it's that's the that's sound, the that sound? That that's john woo's like the foley, you know, foley dude was out there recording things at bank drive throughs <laughs> Now Thunk. you're totally right. So they suck his face off, and Thunk. the funny <laughs> thing about this, about this operation, and this is a sh- one of those things when when you don't watch a movie in a while and you rewatch it, you catch little things like. Oh, yeah. So they go through the whole thing. But first of all, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage couldn't look any less alike. I'm sure there's like a three inch height difference. John Travolta's fat. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, he's also John, way- Nicolas Cage is really skinny. Yeah, like Travolta's more broad shouldered. Yes. It mm-hmm. makes no. His sense. Hand- are different like everything about this guy yep. couldn't be any more different oh yeah and you just, the idea that you could just like photoshop a face onto him and he's gonna be the exact <laughs> same person i want to see like a realistic face off where it's just like he's coming out now from doing the procedure and he just looks horrendous and weird <laughs> yeah. and like he's like struggling to live how is it that towards the end of this movie when they're beating the shit out of each yep. other mano y mano going at it how are you not having effects of, like, the operation getting fucked up? Yes. Like, how are their faces not falling off? They should have totally fallen off. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> come on. Skeletons give, fighting each other. Give me two meaty skeletons fighting each other. Yeah. So they're like, okay, uh, what we're going to do here is, uh, you know, and the doctor's like, well, uh, the height and weight are pretty negligible. Like, yeah, right? And he's like, oh, we're going to yeah. suck out your love handles there. So they're going to give John Travolta lipo in this movie, <laughs> which I really want to see. And they're like, yeah, we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. So they cut his face off. And then once his face is off and he's a big festering face wound, they're giving him a haircut in the in the operation room. <laughs> now this which is insane. insane. This is what I want to know. It's crazy. This is what I want to know. Because I, I noticed the haircut this time, <laughs> the too. Haircut. And my thought was... Who's giving this haircut? Because here's the thing. Robots. <laughs> no, it's clear it's clearly a person that's doing it. Oh really? It. Oh yeah, you I, see I, hands, oh, wow. there's just... gloved hands, and someone's doing a dye job on him, oh, and they're geez. cutting the hair Wait, and... while his face is off. Just, oh, just, while the like, face is off. There's yeah, like yeah. bandages on it. Find me a fucking scientist that can cut and dye hair. <laughs> Find it. Find that scientist. Find me that scientist. Maybe there was a salon guy there, too. That's what I'm saying. You have to rope in a salon but guy to this fucking face-off project. It's so not sterile. Have you, have you ever gotten a haircut? Don't you get it? And you like three weeks later, you, you're you wearing that shirt again. You're like, oh, there's still little hairs in there. Oh, that yeah. That would be in your face. In your Ooh. face, and it's just not even covered up. There is actually, when they're getting ready <laughs> do to do the whole thing, or after, he's sitting there and he's like, uh, uh, like making all these noises. And Bunny Colvin from The Wire is like, what's wrong? And he's like, my face itches. And the dude gives him a face massage, probably because there's hair in there. There's hair <laughs> under your face skin. It's crazy. And like the fact that there's no infection, nothing, like just whatever. There's not even a stitch. And I, yeah, it's I just laser beams or something. <laughs> I don't understand how he heals 
the ne- again, like the, let's say this movie takes place two weeks because they say the 18th, and that's a soon enough date. It seems like it's the next day. Dude, if someone gets a nose job, you've got that thing on your beak for two weeks. Maybe both of them are super mutants like oh. Wolverine. Okay. Well, and... that's the only way Wolverine was able to get the adamantium skeleton right. is because of the healing ability. Yeah, and that's why Wolverine and John Travolta and Nick Cage could all jump around a lot <laughs> and do like massive fightings. All of these flips. Do. Yeah. It's, uh... So they put his face on ice. They're like, all right, we're going to send you this super prison. Don't worry. We're not going to tell any of the guards because that would ruin it. No. Why are you not telling sadistic head guard John Carroll Lynch yep. about what's going on? Why not? What, Wh- is, what is the benefit of keeping the entire prison staff in the dark? I, think- I would be like, hey, look, there's this guy coming in. He's got a fake face. <laughs> Don't let anyone touch it because that shit's going to fall right off. Like, yeah, we, yeah, we had to really like we had to skip a couple of steps because we're, we're on a time crunch here. I think it's, a, it's just like paranoia that like, oh, someone on the team, I don't know who, is probably beating that, information. Right. To yeah, the you're totally right. That could be what it is. But it's still, they go too far with it. All you need to do is find out where the... Bo- like, this movie could have been over quick, right? That's the sure. idea is he gets in there, he finds out, he leaves, which almost happens. Also, I mean, yeah, the whole thing is we're going to get you in, you find out where the bomb is, we'll get you out, <laughs> put your face back on. Mm-hmm. And why we have a two-and-a-half-hour movie is because 50 minutes into this movie, Nicolas Cage, as Caster Troy, wakes up from this coma and... Gets John Travolta's face put on him, and apparently the fat's all put in. What? Where? Where did it come? How does he become fat? <laughs> Here's the thing. Remember <laughs> in Fight Club eating. when they're stealing all the fat out yeah. of that thing to make the soap? Yeah. Oh, he's just drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no but... I mean, I guess maybe if you can pull fat out, you can fucking push it back you into somebody do it else slowly, so that the skin expands. You know, again, something you're not getting done by the 18th. <laughs> Stop it. And dude, him him just like Nick Cage w- smoking a cigarette with no face, yep. walking around this thing. Yeah, talking we're, like Jimmy Stewart. We're trying to up the Jack Nicholson Joker scene with this because we're not we're not seeing this head on. The closest yeah. you get it is right. in the reflection of the scientist's glasses. It's a pretty cool, effective thing, I think, actually. Like the, uh, you, you don't have to show the gore, but you yeah. can see it, and that's even uh, almost more effective. This movie's yeah. pretty well directed, FYI. No, no, He's a good director. It yeah. just doesn't translate to... American movies. Steve, yes. Steve, you're the comic book expert. Now, sure. I was watching this and I was like, is this where they got the idea for the new 52 Joker? That, they've got that in the garbage somewhere. <laughs> what is that? I have no idea what you're even oh talking my God. about. You just said that and I was like, is he speaking a different language? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I didn't actually read it, but apparently the new Joker uh-huh. uh, cut his face off. And he puts it back on with like duct tape because it's super extreme bros oh yeah, that's stupid it's, it's so gritty that's really stupid it, it is, is really dumb they, they, they got rid of it immediately like it was only like, oh, for, really? like six issues and everyone's like that's dumb and they're like oh but oh, now it's they, different oh yeah. they got rid of it yeah he's, he's a regular looking joker now with a with a cut of mod haircut oh, how did they how do they explain that i don't I, I, uh, some ma- not ma- magic unicorn came by <laughs> this week on the Joker, and he's just played by someone else. That's, <laughs> that's all it is. There, that's you just you hit the nail on the head, Eric. So basically, what they do in this movie is they cut the face off, they do all that stuff, and then a magic unicorn comes in that they have in the in the back that they they got from the Unicorn Wars. They have a couple, right? Of course. <laughs> and then Nick Cage is like, "I'm gonna ride you, Betsy." <laughs> Let's go over the rainbow. Also, um, in this jail, apparently the Geneva Convention is invalid. <laughs> Just stop. Well, as John Carroll Lynch says. That's probably true, right? I mean, it's not valid for anything anymore, right? <laughs> well, yeah, you I can't even wipe your ass with that anymore. Also, this Magnet, is... Did we talk about magnet boots? Well, we mentioned it earlier, but yes, they have magnet boots. It's, it's, a, it's a future jail. It's also a future jail because this thing... Is just a big floating barge. Yeah, it's like an oil rig. Yeah. Great. Sure. I mean, also, if it's a thing where you're like out on the top of something and Nicolas Cage yeah. is going to jump off it, I just want to watch The Rock. Like, yeah. yeah. And when he breaks out of the prison in this movie, I'm yeah. like, I but wish I was watching The Rock. What's amazing when he eventually does break out of this prison is the fact that he just jumps into the water and then it cuts to him back in L.A. <laughs> yep. yep. Oh, oh, you know, didn't think to show him swimming for five days. <laughs> With a face that's barely taped to his face. Oh. The double-sided tape is totally going to fall off, you guys. Oh. So he, I mean, and again, like, p- 
alcoholics, Troy would fucking roll over for in a second if you put him in a super jail. Exactly. And he's getting by just fine. Nobody's bothering him. And here's the thing. Word would get around because Mm -hmm. the word on the street is Castor Troy. Nicolas Cage is dead. Yeah. So, oh, your big bad brother's dead, huh? Well, you're fucking prison meat. Oh, my God. So I guess he's in the jail now, right? He's in the jail. He makes friends with, did anybody catch this? A very nerdy, hippie Thomas Jane. Yeah, it's a weird performance. I don't know why he's in this movie. There's a couple of those. It's a graveyard of 90s losers. (laughs) And he's there, and yeah, he's just there for unspecified reasons. Yeah. Actually, the funny thing is, for as high tech as this jail is, you expect it to be like, this is the worst of the worst. This jail's filled with all of history's greatest monsters, or whatever it is, right? Right. It's just like kind of a totally fine, regular not, jail. Yeah. Yeah, it's a regular schmegular jail population. It's not like you meet Thomas Jane, and he's like, yeah, fucking killed 14 little girls and ate all their bodies or something like that it's none of that well even he wouldn't get in this stuff uh, but see i <laughs> wouldn't con- get in <laughs> he'd be on the waiting it, list he wouldn't yeah. make the cut for this super jail it's like getting into harvard or pre-k in brooklyn it's <laughs> very tough <laughs> so, but the thing is, is like i'm con- i'm actually convinced that Jails like this exist. Oh, really? Like I, secret, I secret, like black site jails. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they're all over the place. We just found one people. in Chicago. There was that CIA black site. Yeah, they're 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 everywhere, man. They're everywhere. And I think you know you got you definitely have to be above child eater to get into this. You got to. So be, you're telling me that everyone in that jail is like an international super terrorist? Well, or, or national. <laughs> <laughs> or regional, I don't know. A regional terrorist, <laughs> small town terrorist. That, that's where you got to start. <laughs> and computer crimes too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's true. Mm-hmm. They keep you away from all the keyboards and everything. So, I, 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 I can't with the super <laughs> like it just it stops the movie dead and it takes forever and it's like it's the one el- extra element like you want me to swallow this garbage face off procedure which is garbage yeah. And then you're like, and now we're going to space jail. It's like, well, what year is this? What, well, are, we, what are we talking about? Because that's the thing. Like, I'm buying a ticket or renting a video cassette. I know it's a movie mm-hmm. about, you know, the dude from fucking Raising Arizona and the dude from Saturday Night Fever swap faces. Sure. Like, <laughs> and because I'm renting the video cassette or because I'm buying the ticket. And you're 100 years old, apparently. <laughs> also that. You know, but like. Uh, that's the contract, right? Like, sure. I understand, all right, it's a face swap movie. That sounds pretty stupid, whatever. But n- nowhere in that written agreement does it say anything about a super future jail is acceptable. <laughs> it's just another dumb thing to tack on to this. And you're already well, you're already suspending my disbelief for this operation. It's just adding locations for John Woo to get his next action set piece, you know? True. So... Caster Troy is now in this jail, and mm. of course everyone's trying to beat him up because I don't know why. Well, there's the <laughs> there's the dude, another dude from The Wire who was also on True Blood. He played Andy on True Blood, and his whole thing is uh, like he hates Nicolas Cage, and he, like n- n- John Travolta as Nicolas Cage doesn't know why. And the brother is like, "Don't you remember? You had yourself a sex sandwich with his wife and her sister or something like that. And I'm like, oh, of course, because that's the other side of this. Not only is he like an international super terrorist Mm. who formerly had the best mustache I've seen in a while, Mm -hmm. but he's also just, you know, bagging all sorts of tail in this movie. Of course, of course he's a Lothario. Oh, he's the best of Lotharios. <laughs> he could turn it around on a dime, brother. He's just the coolest guy ever. You he's know? a super cool guy. He has so two gold cool. guns, oh, 70 so... suits all over the place. <laughs> he could eat a peach for hours, as we're told. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole thing. So then he has to turn into this fat cop, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's his hell. And so, yeah, they get into a fight, whatever. He makes a friend. He barely makes a friend out of this guy. <laughs> and then John Travolta, as John Travolta shows up, because this, this is when John Travolta starts doing his performance. Nicolas Cage is kind of fun as the villain right. and pretty good as, you know, the struggling kind of got, good guy going mad as the bad guy. Right. right. John Travolta is at just... I hate him as a villain so much. I hate him in any high energy performance ever. Yeah, I mean, 
Uh, let's reference the remake of Taking the, of Pelham 1, 2, 3. Lick with my the, bunghole, motherfucker. The, yes, the seminal line, lick my bunghole, motherfucker. Uh, him and Swordfish. I mean, Travolta. Him and Broken Arrow. Yes. Oh, he's, yes. Wait, the same right? fucking character wait, wait, in Broken Arrow. He says that line in every movie? <laughs> yes, dude. He's just telling everyone to lick his bunghole. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he's just doing, he's, woo! All oh, over oh he's movie. he's woohooing up and down the block in this, and he's like conducting always and spinning and dancing, and it, <laughs> I can't fucking stand a second of it. Now I think for safety's sake, mm-hmm. we have to go against a usual we hate movies trope with this episode because I feel if we keep just saying Nicolas Cage and John Travolta, gonna things get, are going to get yeah, confused. Right, right. So it, it's already gotten there. The good guy. Is Sean Archer. Yes. The bad guy is Caster Troy. I think we have to keep it at that. Yes. Sure. But, Eric, you are correct. It is getting a little confusing. But what but but here's the thing with that. Caster Troy, am I talking about Nick Cage and Super Prison? Because that's technically Sean Archer. <laughs> oh shit, you're right. All right, so let's just Good let's guy, just, bad guy. Yes, let's just tread lightly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just hold our hand. We'll get we'll get to the end of this episode. Now what I want to relay is, you know, what, sometimes when we're watching these movies for the show, right? Mm-hmm. We'll be watching them simultaneously. Sure. Not with each other, but you know and we'll text about the movie. And see, you and I were like I think you were like 10 minutes ahead of me while yeah. watching the movie, so we're texting about it. And I said to you, who's worse in this movie, Nicolas Cage or John Travolta? And what was your answer? I said John Travolta. Hands you on. instantly answered John Travolta. It was all capital letters, right? And I said, I don't know. Nicolas Cage is pretty terrible in this movie. But you were ahead of me enough in the movie that you had got to John Travolta woohooing. Yeah, it's... And I had not. <laughs> and the second that happened, I said... I've never wanted to retract something harder in my life. I regretted saying that so bad because Travolta is hands down the worst of these two. He's like Ric Flair in this movie. He's like, woo! <laughs> to everybody. Eric, where do you stand with this? Who's worse? Oh, I'm uh, uh, team worse is Travolta, yeah. Yeah, for sure. He, hands down. Well, because he, I mean, like, again, all, think of his best roles Saturday Night Fever, Mr. Cotter, uh,. <laughs> Pulp Fiction, all very stoic, you know, like, yep. hey, you know, monosyllabic kind of like cool guy performances. Yes. Once he starts dancing and jingling around, I have no time for it. And that's well, why unless the... it's Pulp Fiction. <laughs> okay. Because no, the... even that is a reserved uh, dance. He takes his shoes off to dance in that movie. <laughs> that's how reserved it is. He's got a problem with drinking an $8 milkshake. Yeah, he's not woohooing anywhere in Pulp Fiction. Absolutely not. He's getting shot to death on a toilet. He's a heroin addict. He's pretty fucking cool in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes in. John Travolta appears as the bad guy. Yeah. And Nicolas Cage, as the good guy, sees what's going on. And is like, oh, no, no. And, you know, his worst nightmare is confirmed. Mm. And, Interestingly enough, yeah. they, they put on the... T- we're talking about when he's on the television? No, when he comes and visits him in prison. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of us. And he's... Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's ridiculous that's when he's later on line. the TV. But he comes in and he's like, oh, see something familiar? Look who it is. I have your fucking face now. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. <laughs> and it's a real, like, what are you going to do about it? He explains, I got your face and I got your fat. Mm-mm-mm. Lick my bunghole, motherfucker. <laughs> and he, he says that in that Pelham remake, yeah. and it's terrible. He says it to, to Denzel yeah, Washington. No, no. So he explains, like, listen, I dumped gasoline on CCH Pounder, yep. Bunny Colvin from The Wire, and that scientist who did the operation, and then I burned the whole lab down. So, sorry. See you later. What about the other people that did that operation? What about the lady giving him the haircut, the nice lady <laughs> that gave him the haircut? I guess they got killed, too, so they well, could, could never get that haircut undone. <laughs> Well, John Travolta had that same haircut. I mean, that's the haircut he's got in Broken Arrow. That's the haircut he's got in Phenomenon. Yep. Michael, he's got a mullet or yeah. like a, a big scraggly thing going on. Sure. Now, 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 the present day John Travolta, he has. I don't know whose face he's wearing these days. <laughs> well, I'll tell you whose hair he's got on. It's Nicolas Cage from this movie. He's got the carpet sample haircut. You're mm-hmm. right. You can just see those plugs from space. <laughs> it's terrible. It's so terrible, man. And he's just, he's woohooing, you know, and he's like, look, I got this. I got your face. I also, 
Um, I've changed my hands to look like your hands. <laughs> my, Cut the, we, should, we should be called hands off. <laughs> Yes. Well, Nicolas Cage, as the good guy, wants to say, keep your hands off my wife and daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh I'm going to fuck your daughter. I'm going to fuck your wife. And, 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 and. He's doing the tongue <laughs> thing all over the place. Yeah. Oh, Caster Troy. And, you know, he's like, enjoy prison, motherfucker. And, like, leaves yep. him. And he takes his brother, too. He's like, oh, I'm, you're going to sign a deal with me, blah, blah, blah. Right, yeah. And now, because the FBI botched this operation so hard, no one in the world knows who he is. Here's the thing. If you're doing this, like, you need to plan it. If you want to keep it secret, okay, fine. Tell your wife. Tell. No, if you want to keep it secret yeah. from the family and whatever, sure. that's okay. You have another FBI agent. Get yep. Margaret Cho in. Yep, exactly. If Margaret Cho, here's the deal. Here's what's going on. And in the off chance that this gets horrendously botched, mm-hmm. which Sean Archer's track record of botching all sorts of operations. He's naming people that have died in his care. Totally. Uh, we're going to send you to a safe house yep. in, I don't know, the Czech Republic. <laughs> you know, you're going to Prague till the 18th. Like that, you know. Yeah. So you can't be found tied to a chair, dumped with gasoline and yeah. burned. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you need that safety person who's away in a bunker that there's no way if Castor Troy wakes up from this coma and puts on Sean Archer's face, he will find you and kill you. Well, she'd be like, but boss, but he looks nothing like you. I mean, you're, you've got a bigger ass. I mean, like, what? how else? <laughs> what if they come up and they ask you about all the different levels of Scientology? What are you going to tell them? <laughs> you better start, you know, studying up on all of those. Do you think Scientology rejected Nicolas Cage? Like, they, they gave him that <laughs> test, and he's like, no, they, no. He was too crazy. For yeah, them. Just like, like, it's like, shit, you, you know, if we let him in, I'm going to be calling him boss soon <laughs> No, they tried to audit him, and the cans exploded. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think that guy might actually be Lord Zenu. <laughs> which yeah, is, which is a bad guy, by the way, right? Zenu is a bad guy, yeah. so they'd have to do something about it. Unless he it. got his face off with the... <laughs> oh, with that would the, be so fucked up. Tom Cruise and Lord Zenu get a face <laughs> switch. So... You know, the bad guy goes home. Yeah. And uh, we have the wife, Joan Allen, and the daughter, who I thought was Maggie Grace, but then I forgot that this movie was made in 1997. Uh, it's Dominique Swain. Yes. Um, and she's like the punk rock princess in this movie. Well, no, she's goth because she's troubled because oh, this it's whole goth, family is, it? is totally fucked up. Because the kid got murdered, right. and instead of being right. a man and being like, you know what, maybe this game, this FBI game ain't for me, Right? let's take, let's mend our wounds and be a family, he's just like, no, I'm going to fucking kill him, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to come home and bring this shit home every single night. Until he's dead, and then it'll be over with, but until then, put up with it. That's the best, uh. actually, so when, when f- f- rewind back to when John Travolta was still John Travolta, when he <laughs> thought he killed Caster Troy, he comes home. Celebratory is like, oh, Joan Allen, it's going to be so good now. Because you can tell everything's terrible. Because A, his uh, daughter is goth, which is telegram, movie yep. telegram for terrible fucking life. A, oh, well, yeah, or bad, bad parenting, too. Bad, lazy parenting. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, that's the movie telegram. Yep. That's what it's trying to tell you. Absolutely. And he goes to Joan Allen, like, oh, it's going to be better now. Janie's going to be normal. And, like, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna go to counseling because I killed that guy. And it's like... <laughs> And what he does, oh man, and he totally puts it on Joan Allen, too. He's like, whatever you want to do, yeah. whatever you want. No, this family needs counseling. It's not what I want or don't want, <laughs> you dick. So then when he comes home, when the bad, bad guy. guy comes <laughs> yeah. home, and he's dancing all over the place, <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like romancing her and all of this shit, instantly you're like, this isn't him. Like, there's no. If my dad came home, like, and my dad, like, you know, gruff cop dude, sure. right? If he comes home singing and dancing, I'd just mm. be like, there must have been a face-off situation. Yeah. <laughs> or, I, or I would be like, you oh, know, the old man must be having an affair. <laughs> There's the great moment where, like, he's driving through the neighborhood and he's like, what a piece of shit neighborhood. Look at this shit ass house. You know, because he's he's used to the best of the best. Right? Oh, sure. This, right, yeah. The, he, as a bad guy. He, yeah, he resides in, like, a rave castle. 
and he drives past the house and Joan Allen's just like standing outside her with her arms crossed and he's like, <laughs> wow, look hours. at that bitch. And just keeps driving and he's like, oh, wait, that's his bitch. And like rewind or, you know, drives backwards. And <laughs> yes, yes, reverses, rewind. Reverses, yes, sorry. I'm going to rewind this car. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, before you bring this into my auto shop, you better have rewound it. <laughs> and she's like, don't try that flirty shit with me. I'm still mad at you. Well, because he says, oh, it's all going to be different, baby. And, you know, we're going to get counseling. I'm going to be a person again. She's like, well, right. that'd be fucking nice. And then he's like, oh, sorry. I have one more job to do that I can't tell you about. Yep, exactly. Just one last job. Which, wouldn't she then be like, you told me you were going to be gone for like weeks. Yep. And you showed back up like three days later or something. Something. And why are your hands different? I mean, I can't <laughs> get over the hands. And we'll get to the next part, which is the next part. So he's like dealing with the daughter and everything, too. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no, I meant just when they fuck. And like, how on earth? Oh, yeah. Does she not know? Because are you doing cock husband's... replacement? Yeah, is this a dick off? <laughs> yeah, no. Is there a dick off happening here? I wonder if there was a porno parody made of this movie called Cock Off or Dick Off or something. If not, there should be. <laughs> and if there is one coming, we get a piece of the pie. Why would it be coming? This movie's almost 20 years old. For well, the anniversary, brother. Because of, <laughs> yes, the anniversary and when We Ate Movies talks about something, it reaches a boiling point. <laughs> someone in the porno parody <laughs> office is like, finally, someone's demanding a face-off parody. But how on earth, if you've been fucking a guy for 20 years, yep. he comes home with a haircut. You're like, hey, nice haircut. He comes home <laughs> with a different dick. You're calling the cops. <laughs> and, oh. there's, and listen, <laughs> oh I know. God, sorry. Did your I husband know. get the different dick procedure too? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joan Allen, you might want to talk to the police. <laughs> Oh no, baby, my dick just became uncircumcised. I thought I'd that spice, happens. I thought I'd spice things up <laughs> and get a get a hood installed. <laughs> they make some the doctor does make a remark about like <laughs> you have different blood types, but y- your wife won't notice anything with that or you know whatever your or <laughs> Pollux <laughs> won't check your for that. Your not know the different dick thing. She's never going to figure <laughs> it out. Well, may- well, listen. That marriage is in shambles, so maybe he's like, yeah, don't worry about the dick thing. Nothing's happening in that department anyway. Well, he's not going to remember it. Well, the thing is, like, there's there's no way they had a dick off because he was <laughs> it was only supposed to be a short-term thing. Yes. Yeah, you're totally right. Unless Pollux Troy needs to see, let me see your dick, brother. I need to know what's going on down there. Because he, he kind of even, like, remember in the beginning, he's like, head? oh, what's going on there? I think you had a face-off surgery. And he's like, no, I didn't. Yeah, he's totally like, oh, what was the name of of the whatever the fuck yeah. you know he's he's like testing him but why what there's no there's no way someone would guess that <laughs> it's an imposter off. and there was a face swap <laughs> surgery you show me the beauty mark on your dick <laughs> They don't make mention of any, like, tattoos or anything no. like that. You'd, Caster Troy's probably got a dick tattoo. Of course. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> oh, John Travolta's scar, though. He oh, has yeah. to get that back. Yeah, he gets it off, and they're like, oh, well, you'll have to remove it just so you look so... You, that's the only thing separating you from Nicolas Cage, John Travolta, <laughs> is the scar. But, 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 but Nicolas Cage almost died in this fight. Like, who cares if there's suddenly a scar? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, what's awesome, though, is he's like, I want that scar back, though. Give me the scar back because it's important to me. And my thought was, where are you keeping the scar? (laughs) It's not like a face where I guess you can just keep it in that aquarium that they keep it in. I'll tell you where they keep it. They're not keeping it. The doctor's just like, yeah, okay. And then they put him under and the doctor just starts stabbing him with the scalpel. All right. Yeah, that looks like a bullet wound. Sure. Yeah. Get a little more oomph in that. Just keep carving him up. Like a turkey. Yeah, twist. So, I mean, the, the, that's when the movie stops dead for me. Like, well, how on earth does she not know what his dick looks like? I mean, totally. Come, come on. Come on, everybody. But again, though, I mean, we did bring up a good point. It's not the fault of those doctors because they weren't anticipating this other person waking up from a coma. And again, even if he's in a coma, posted security at all times. Exactly. Yes, exactly. If Hannibal Lecter's got a doctor's appointment, there's security <laughs> around that hospital. At least cuff him to the bed. Yes. yes. And also, wouldn't she notice that she's got all these, these STDs now? 
I mean, Caster, you're, got, you're goddamn right. Caster Troy's loaded with something. He's crawling with all sorts of things, mm. guaranteed. He, we saw the rave castle later in the movie. He's having people suck his tongue. He doesn't know who they are. I mean, that's how you get herpes. He's eating peaches for hours? Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> and can we just point out, I think maybe I mentioned it, but... Caster Troy's got all sorts of different moves in the bedroom than yeah. John Travolta yes, does. Absolutely, that is that is a real like whimper and a cry sex. Yeah, and I mean like he's he's like all like scrabbing everybody and doing stuff. Like he's got a different style. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. Papa's got a brand new bag. Oh that's, man! That's, uh, so that's the next scene. Is like the daughter is just like in a skimpy outfit, and he's like, "Ooh, the plot." Thickens, John Travolta. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo! Sexy daughter. Mm-mm. Yeah. Thank you, movies, reminding me of uh, incest. It, sure. Is, I mean, this girl is emotionally ruined at the end of this movie, right? There's just no two ways about no, it. No, yeah, nope. you've got to just kill it and start over. <laughs> Salt the earth. I think the thing is, after this whole thing... The three of them just part ways. <laughs> yes, right? you break like, up as a family. Yeah. Dominique Swain is old enough. She could go, you know, down to a pier and find a way to live on her own, you know. <laughs> Maybe, or college. <laughs> One or the other. No, Steve, she's a filthy goth girl. She's yeah, not going to college. That's true, yeah. She the movie never... told us that. <laughs> All right. The movie damns her by being a goth girl. Like, she's got there's a nose been ring. goths in college? <laughs> I know that, but John Woo and other screenwriters apparently <laughs> okay, don't. So this, all right, so the character- Look at that demon. There's no <laughs> there's no higher education in the future for that demon child. So she's like smoking in the bedroom and, and he's she's like she's listening to James Brown. Find me one goddamn goth girl just sitting around listening to James Brown. Find me most any teenager sitting around listening to james brown goth girl or otherwise <laughs> you know what it is fat white guy music that's what you're listening to <laughs> and he's like he's like oh mind if i get a smoke and she's like what and he's like there's gonna be a lot of changes around and he here. like goes up to her like he's about to grab her ass like he yep. goes like oh, oh i need something i need something from you and she's like well, oh my God, oh my God, this is this is the end of my life. That's yes. it, that's it, <laughs> yeah. that's it. Uh, and then he's like, oh, I need this cigarette. She's like, okay, I'm still emotionally scarred from that exchange because that was a little flirty. And then my dad got a little flirty with me the other day. Oh. And she, he's like, Papa's got a brand new bag. And he does like... He, <laughs> and he starts dancing down the hallway. Does well, doesn't he blow smoke rings too? He blows smoke rings right in her face See? and then sass, sashays down the hallway with that cigarette like, ooh, being bad is so good. Oh, God. And you just want to fucking kill yourself. They need, I, that, that scene should have been repla- replace James Brown with actual goth music. Get Bauhaus on there. So of you, course. So you, could get, so you could get John Travolta to go down that hallway going, Woo! Bella Lugosi's dead. <laughs> <laughs> also, Bauhaus like definitely cheaper than James Brown mm-hmm. as far as licensing oh, yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. yeah, but no one will know what it is. So. That's true. But then, and then you can't get that great. Papa's got a brand new bag. Pr- pun. La, la 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 la. Um. So then, <laughs> lick my bunghole. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah exactly. Looking. It's a lick my bunghole, motherfucker <laughs> moment. So he winds up. Um, as John Travolta as the bad guy who know who knows where the bomb is, he goes and disables it and becomes the hero of the bureau and receives his second applause at work. But this second applause is much more welcomed by this John Travolta, and he's like dancing all over the place, and everyone's well, loving he it. He does. He he does. He does disarms the bomb with a second to go. Mm-hmm. So then the news crews are interviewing him and stuff, and he it, it, it's some line like. Like, if the terrorist is listening, I just want to let them know that interception, now our side's got the ball. And met with a thunderous round of applause from the news crews around them? Come on. Nobody gives a shit about I'm, I mean, I love cops. I think they do a great job. Nobody gives a fuck about cops in the news. You know what I mean? Like, no. no one's ever like cannibals. Oh. <laughs> yes, exactly. Cannibals or monsters or whatever. Nobody's like applauding cops. I don't know like what the latest hero cop in New York is. Like nobody knows that shit. Nobody knows it. But also you don't have any cops that are like taunting terrorists no. on the local news. Cuz that's a bad idea. <laughs> a. <laughs> yeah, I think if that if that happened, if like an FBI agent got in front of a camera and was like, "Interception. Now our side's got the ball." 
essentially a coded lick my bunghole motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, that's the subtitle. <laughs> yeah, the translation in parentheses. Yes. Like everyone would be like, "That's a terrible idea." Yes, I can't believe he just like waved red you know to the terrorists. Also, really weird. You you operate a you operate a black site prison, uh-huh. and you decide to have full TV privileges <laughs> on a big screen, like projected on the wall. Well, uh, I guess they're magnetically stuck to the floor. So where are they? So gonna go? we'll give them the local news and entertainment tonight. <laughs> we'll pacify their masses. So he goes back to the office. He gets the applause, and he's dancing. And I was like, "Wow, look at him dance!" And then Margaret Cho's like. Excuse me, sir. When did you have the operation? He's like, oh, the face-off operation? Dude, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. He was like, oh, my God. I think she knows what the face-off operation is. She's like, well, what operation? She's like, how did you get that stick removed from your ass? And, like, everyone laughs. And if I was him, I'd be like, oh, you mean my dead son? Are you talking about yeah, oh, totally. the stick up my ass? You mean the, the me mourning my dead son for six years? Also, you're have suspended. Have you ever lost a child? You're suspended for a month without pain. Yep, now. absolutely. Yeah, real fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'll see you in May. <laughs> That's what you get for zigging your, your boss. <laughs> it's so unbelievable. And the room kind of, I mean, some people I think hear it, but other people are like, oh. Because listen, if someone comes in who is notorious for having a stick up their ass, mm. one day off from the stick up the ass yep. does not necessarily mean this is a changed person. And in this case, it's, liter- it's literally a different person. In yes, this well, he's got a face off, yeah. But, you know, you you have to give that like a couple weeks. Like, you know what, boss? Like, I don't know what happened, but it's it's been really great around <laughs> yes, here the yeah. next the last couple of weeks. Like you've been really fantastic. You've been wooing a lot more. You dance a little bit, and if anything, not in the middle of the office at a happy hour. Yep. at a bar somewhere, you can make that. Jo- you can't make that joke without a pint of beer in your hand. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> yep. If you're still on the clock, not making that joke. Nope. So he's dancing around, and oh man, oh oh man, when he's like. Is this the part where the secretary comes up and she's like, uh, uh, sir, the president's on line one and your wife's on line two? And he's like, tell the president to hold. And then grabs her ass and is like, oh, oh he comes in the middle of work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The sexual harassment here. Although I would have liked to have seen him answer the phone with the president <laughs> yes. and had John Travolta from Primary Colors answer <laughs> the other end. Oh, man, this movie could have used a double role, for sure. (laughs) Why not? Starring John Travolta. Face off the clumps. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. So, Nick Cage wants to break out of prison. He does. And he does. In a horrific... He's the good guy here. This is the most bloody prison riot that anyone ever perpetrates. It's brutal. (laughs) It's absolutely brutal. On guards. All these guards get murdered. And it's a weird thing where, like, he's kind of wrestling with it because it's like, oh, fuck, you know, I I am this cop, but I got to kill these dudes to make it look good. You know what I mean? Well, he's not... he. Basically, like gets Donkey Kong, who is this guy, this <laughs> other guy, this big. It's the dude from True Blood. The dude from True Blood to kill everybody while he's just like behind him, like, oh, that's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> and he, oh, and here's another bit of bullshit: is when this jailbreak is happening, and yeah, he's got Donkey Kong throwing barrels at all the <laughs> prison guards, and basically a riot breaks out, so the other prisoners are getting in on it, sort of. Um. Nicholas Cage, as the good guy, goes over to this control panel and just starts boop boop bopping this fucking thing. <laughs> and I was like, there is absolutely no way you, as an FBI agent, know how to operate the computer system at this black site prison. With absolutely no way. Absolutely no way. Nope. And he's just like, he hacks the net in two seconds and they, yeah. they break out and, and what have you. This, and this is another stupid part, too. And this is where, like, John Woo's, like, ultra dramatic style yep. does not work because donkey kong goes over the railing yep. and they're trying to hold on and you know cage just drops him and this dude falls to this his this guy's dead. not a character he's I'm not at all <laughs> and even if he was he's not a character that i'm like live donkey kong <laughs> damn you live don't drop donkey <laughs> this is a moment of like i got you i i, I need to, I, I need to oh, live. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know and he falls in slow motion like alan rickman <laughs> <laughs> i'm just not buying it man it's so fucking hammy. Yeah, and, it's a bit of bullshit. Right there. <laughs> and he swims for, like Eric said, for days, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he meets up with. Uh, he goes to 
the hideout, which is, I mean, like, this is where the Riddler is. It's, yeah. It's two floors. There's, like, bedrooms in the center. There's, like, stairs everywhere. I don't know what this place is even supposed to be. This I mean, it's not a, a hideout. Yeah. It's very much like a, hey, how's it going? We're here. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, this isn't where villains hide out. It's not a hideout. It's a hangout. <laughs> And, you know, that's evident because, you know, uh, Nick Cassavetti brings Caster Troy. Er, shit. It's, Sean <laughs> Archer as Caster Troy. Yeah, he brings the good guy. Yeah, in to do coke and drink and hang out with a bunch of other hooligans. Yeah, there's just a couple of faceless dead meats hanging out. And then Nick Cassavetti's sister is played by Gina Gershon. Yes. Who has a child that we learn is Caster Troy's child. And... In another bit of incest in this movie, Nick Cassavetes and Gina Gershon are very la 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 la. They're making out. Oh, yeah. And you're just like, what's going on, John Woo? You know what? That kid doesn't talk much. I'm not exactly sure he's Caster Troy's, is what I'm saying. Who are you thinking? <laughs> oh, God. You think you got, oh, a, you got a, oh. Jeff, uh, a Jeffrey, a Joffrey Baratheon on your head? Yeah, I think yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> a little, the Lannister uh... sired a little Baratheon. Hey, yeah. he's got a Game of Thrones haircut, this little kid. He's got a little <laughs> disgusting little rat's nest. He's on the there. same thing. He's got, he looks very similar to John Travolta's kids, a little moppet. And like John Travolta's all. Um, Nick Cage as John Travolta, whatever the, the fuck. The good guy. The good guy is all <laughs> high because like he did coke with his buddies. And like he's like, oh, oh, Michael, Michael. And this kid's like, whoa, 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 stranger, stranger. And she's just like, his fucking name is Adam. What are you doing? He's, oh, Michael. Oh. And he, they have this stupid thing where it's like, oh, the I guess hand. this is a family of magicians because everybody goes up to each other. <laughs> Their like secret thing is like you gently trapes your fingers over somebody else's face. Like that's yeah. that's the secret archer handshake you know what else i think that handshake was featured in mm. thin oh, <laughs> yes. i think that's what that old lady does to that fat guy also helen keller <laughs> <laughs> that's also how gor- yeah on how gorillas say hello to each other too <laughs> well that that shows you how how human they're like they're almost uh a nick cage family <laughs> and he's like oh michael oh michael and she's like whoa 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 <laughs> Whoa, don't do that. <laughs> There's a, a great scene where the bad guy doesn't know that it's the good guy's dead kid's birthday. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and John Travolta is like sauntering to work and she's like, where are you going? He's like, to work, honey. And she's like, today of all days, you're pulling this. And he's like, yeah, well, you know. And it's, it's again, I would be like, this isn't my husband. Yep. That dick is at least two inches longer <laughs> last night. I yep. don't know what's going on there. He totally forgot the dead son's birthday. Mm-hmm. I got to call my friend. Is face-off surgery possible? She's a doctor. She might know. She might have read something in the New England Journal of Medicine. You're totally right. This guy right. definitely published a paper before he did a face-off surgery. <laughs> You're well, because before me. you do it, you got to write a big, long thing and fucking brag about it. Exactly. You got to get some funding. <laughs> I think I read about this exact thing in February's New England Journal of Medicine. And, you know, so they go and he's got to eat shit. And it's it's weird because, like, this guy is the devil. But for some reason, he does feel bad about this kid. I mean, not to say that whatever it's, it's right to kill a kid or not but like i just don't buy that this character would ever give a shit about this kid well it's interesting because when you think back to that the opening scene when he realizes what happened like there is a shot of nicholas cage being like oh like just the littlest yeah. bit you know what that is that is that's him going ah oh, should have gone for the headshot <laughs> yeah, yeah You're man. Totally right. also it's six years ago he's gotten over it and it's, yeah. it would not be a thing where it's like, look what I did to this fucking family. Oh, no. Yeah, no, yeah. He'd be like, look what I did to this fucking family. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the move. You're but totally he, right. He does feel bad. And, like, that's – they have a couple of shots of him, like – and he likes the daughter, too. Like, at one point, she almost gets raped by Danny Masterson. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Another note not, in Scientology. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he saw him in a meeting. He's like, hey, you want to be in a movie? <laughs> and this is – man – he, like Jason Voorhees, through this car window and pulls Danny Masterson up onto the lawn and is going to beat the shit out of him. Yeah, that's right. It's like a, he pulls a Beldar Conehead. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen the Coneheads. Oh, yeah, dude. Who's seen that Coneheads movie? That's something else. Oh, huh? I have. Yeah, of course you have. Remember, uh, you know what's a great line in that movie is when um, 
she totally like shoves the subway sandwich in her mouth really yeah. fast and he, chris farley's like reminds me of my mother <laughs> it's fucking funny um oh and then this is another hitting on moment because he's like do you have protection and she's just like what like condoms and then he whips out this butterfly knife yeah come on and he's like yeah if you do if he, if he ever comes up to you again you got to stick this in his thigh and twist it motherfucker and she's like <laughs> wow that's something I was almost <laughs> raped. Good night, movie. So in the office, there's a, there's a thing where they're like, hey, so Caster Troy totally broke out of that jail. Yeah. And, you know, he jumped off this thing and we're celebrating because he's dead, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, did they find the body yet? And Margaret Cho's like, oh, um, it hasn't been recovered yet. And this is another terrible Travolta delivery. He's just like, it hasn't been recovered yet. <laughs> And I'm like, you're getting paid millions of dollars to spew this shit. It's unbelievable. Lick my bug hole, Margaret Cho! <laughs> <laughs> and, she's, and she's got a great reaction because it's like, this is me just getting screamed at at work again. And so, like, the most obvious thing you could think of is, well, if I was me, where would I go? I guess <laughs> Nick Cassavetti's house. Oh, yeah, back to the old orgy mansion. So we have an orgy mansion invasion, which is also maybe could be the sequel title to Cock, <laughs> Cock Off 2. And also, how is this not the end of the movie? Because at this point, we've had a lot of John Travolta as Nicolas Cage, and a lot of Nicolas Cage as John Travolta. Oh, we've, we've sat with it for a long time. It's the logical end. It, it is build, basically billed as the end. It's, it's an hour and 49 minutes in. It's like, this is it. This is the end of the movie. That makes perfect sense. This totally. Is, everything's coming together. You're getting every... You're, you're, you're killing tons of people in this fight. This is hilariously where, well, the brother falls through a bunch of windows. Yeah. Kind of like, um, you guys remember Bruce Willis's death in Death Becomes Her when he, like, falls yeah. through the window into the pool or whatever. Yeah. I kind of always think of that when I see this movie, but it's like he falls through like four different sets of windows yep. and he's dead. This is where the dude from PCU comes in and John Travolta, as the bad guy, is crying over the dead terrorist. And he's like, hey, boss, who gives a shit? It's just Pollock's Troy. And John Travolta shoots this guy in the head. Well, yeah. you know what? Which is, I think that's half Caster Troy revealing his true evil nature and half... The boss of this fucking team telling everyone to lip up a little bit. You know what? Like, literally, it's gotten out of control. Absolutely. Margaret Cho is snipping at me every second she gets. You're now what? I got this asshole <laughs> talking to me in, on, a, on the job. No, I'm blowing his head off. You're totally right. And then, like, um, the good guy as the bad guy saves Adam Troy from being from shot. From certain death. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this yeah. is the yada, somewhere yada, over yada. the rainbow scene yeah. where the, the, he puts on headphones. And, like, oh, and they're man. like, oh, listen to your music. Listen to your music. And apparently Adam, this eight-year-old kid, is a 45-year-old gay man because he's listening to <laughs> Wait a listen second. To John sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Like, who listened to that shit? Every character that's a child that listens to music is just so off base. <laughs> First of all, yeah, you're right. Because if you're a little kid, you listen to whatever your parents put on. That's true. It's not like, I'm getting this album. Yeah. Fuck you, little kid. You're going <laughs> to listen to what I'm listening to. <laughs> Shut up. So maybe maybe that makes more sense. It's Gina Gershon. She's like having sad time listening to <laughs> Olivia Newton-John sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Listen, with this right. life that she's leading, that song's on loop. Yeah, and that makes sense. Then we get the logical end of the movie where we have the mirror sequence. Yes! Which is like... If, if 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 in duck soup Groucho Marx was trying to kill himself, because <laughs> it's you know you're facing in, you're facing in front of the mirror and it's like oh I see Caster Troy I want to kill Caster Troy you're that's, totally even right that's my reflection yeah. how yep. trippy is that yeah exactly and this is also it's also where you get you know one of the several John Woo staples of people back to back like yep. you know this time there's a wall between them but yeah the back to back we're gonna start firing at each other yep. Also, and who puts a mirror on one side of the wall and then directly on the other side put another mirror? It's a coke den dungeon, Eric. Yeah, I don't know what's yeah. going on. Drug dealers with bad taste, <laughs> right? 
Um, so this is all, Nick Cassavetes gets shot in the throat. Yeah. And he's like, oh, just get out of here. Get out of here. I'll see you later. And I'm going to fucking tongue kiss my sister right now. <laughs> well, you know, you're on your way out. You always wanted to do it. You're totally right. But the one thing I'll say is guaranteed that's not their first tongue kiss. Yeah, you probably. As right. you, you know, posited, Steve, that kid might be a product of incest. He could be a Lannister for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so, oh, it's, well, also, you know, it, it's. It, yeah. Sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I mean, it really could be the end. You know, let's just fucking, let's crack open the doves and end this movie. That's the way you know it's not the end. <laughs> it's because there's no doves anywhere in this scene. You're totally right. But again, how it could be the end is Nick Cassavetes has a line where he's like, wow. He's like holding his neck. He's like, we've had some good times, haven't we? I'm like, yep, perfect line for the end of the movie. Theory, do you think it was supposed to be the end of the movie, but they were shooting it and, you know, it's like a three-week shoot. And like John, John Woo's like, all right, let's break out the doves. And like, oh my God. Oh, and they're like <laughs> looking at the form. And it's like, this doves went to Ar- Argentina by accident. We're not going to have these replacement doves for another three weeks. Cut to Argentina. <laughs> Just a little box. That it's is, a box of doves sitting on an airport strip. <laughs> that is definitely what happened. <laughs> Some squirrely intern being like, I need this back in Burbank. <laughs> Oh, I'll never work in Hollywood again. And John Wu R- R- refuses to like reshoot those sequences, and we're just gonna have to do another action set piece. We're <laughs> gonna need another thirty <laughs> minutes to figure this fucker out. So, I mean, we're not gonna keep you here for another thirty minutes. But he convinces Joan Allen, the good guy, convinces Joan Allen that of the face swap thing due to some good old fashioned uh, blood uh, blood type analysis. Yeah, and you know they do that and. She's on his side, and there's like an emotional scene that nobody wanted because nobody bought it. What I love, though, in this scene, so they're at the hospital. He tracks her down at the hospital because he's like, just go. He punches a, mir- a, a, a picture frame and gets blood all over it, and he's like, test that shard of glass, and we'll meet back up in two hours or whatever. So he goes to the hospital. She's, like, crying because it's a match and blah, blah, blah. And so then he suspects that the bad guys are on their way yeah. to track him down. And sure enough, there's John Travolta marching with these goons and they go into the hospital and he pulls back this curtain and there's Joan Allen looking at some dude with like acid burns on his face. (laughs) And this is all in the matter of seconds. And I was like, where did she find this acid burn victim? Because this guy's seriously fucked up. Yep. And she's like, oh, good. Yeah, bring this guy right in. Get out, get out, get out. There's a whole other supervillain movie happening. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Uh, He messed with the Moronis and got the acid in the face. (laughs) Exactly. And all of a sudden, uh, John Travolta's boss dies because uh, (laughs) evil John Travolta, like, karate kicks him in the heart. Because well, he comes in, he's like, I don't like to stop attackers, goddammit. <laughs> he, he, he assholes his way into another death. If this guy just keeps his mouth shut in movies, yeah. he'd make it to the end. <laughs> but, but what's no, a, yes. no, but what's a, this is what's awesome about it is it's evil John Travolta is a very opportunistic terrorist uh, because this guy is showing symptoms of a heart attack before. Yeah. And then he, like Travolta just exacerbates the situation because he comes in, yeah, and he's like, Gestapo tactics. <sighs> and another thing about... <sighs> and you see him be like, oh, say. And he just like karate chops this guy and brings the full-on heart attack. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, no. He calls the secretary. You better get in. You called 911. The Sarge had a heart attack. The climax of this movie would take place clearly at this guy's funeral who had six lines in the movie. <laughs> So they go to his funeral. That way, everyone's in their black suits. Get your John Mu checkbook out. Totally. And uh, I, I guess this guy was a Buddhist because, I mean, there, are, there is a lot of Christ imagery going on. But th- it, this looks like a Buddhist temple that they filmed in. Oh, it's, it's all mixed up. It's so Don't know weird. what to do because fucking... <laughs> Nice, nice 311 reference. Is it's like this pre-Vatican II mass? I thought it was like Santa Ria or whatever that religion it's is. All, it's all in Latin. I thought they were going to sacrifice a chicken. <laughs> they lit sixty of those super tall, narrow candles and just cut a chicken's throat. Yeah, it's just there's do they're speaking Latin. There's like, there's no way near this much Latin in a, in a Catholic church. No. Which is what this looks like. And, I mean, you can get you get the Latin masses, so, but you're telling me it's at this guy's funeral? What is, I no. think we're in a different country. In this. <laughs> I think we've gone. I think we're in, like, I don't know, some... 
Maybe we traveled to Hong Kong because this is a Hong Kong action movie right. set in California. <laughs> It's so insane. And, you know, John Travolta has to go. Like It's like his last work function he has to do. He's like, oh, I guess i got to go to my boss's funeral. Right. And so then Nicolas Cage, like, passes the altar boy a note, you know, and John Travolta gets it like, I'm here. Come lick my bunghole, motherfucker, <laughs> you know. So they go into, like, another room of this temple church or whatever. And, you know, then we got another classic John Woo thing of everybody's pointing the guns. Yep. And Gina Gershon shows up. There's a couple of goons that shows up. There's a little great scene when... She, so, like, Joan Allen finally accepts that Nicolas Cage is actually her husband. Right. She's really pissed at him because she had sex with this other guy. She's like, well, we were living as man and wife for a week. What do you expect to happen? That's not Sean Archer's fault. No, and... <laughs> But she, she, you're right though. She is kind of pissed off. Like, do you know I fucked that guy? And he's like, <laughs> so he's I was like, in a uh, super jail. Oh, did you, did you look at his dick? <laughs> How'd you not notice the dick? And he, so Gina Gershon shows up. Like, she saves him at the end. She got the gun. She's like, hey, baby, to him. And like, Joan Allen does the best piece of acting, which she gives him like a nice face. Like, oh, nice. Mm. Yeah, totally. Must be nice. I've been fucking my mortal enemy by accident. And you're just fucking around with Gina Gershaw and having coke parties. I fucked the guy who killed our son, but you just knowingly fucked some other woman. Yeah, nice. Mm, nice. Mm, that's great. Yeah. That's really fantastic. I can't wait to be divorced from you in two hours. Oh, absolutely. If you live through this. <laughs> So, you know, then we just start firing wildly and it's a big shootout. There's also a bullshit thing when John Travolta originally like walks into the setup yeah. and he's doing like the, oh, Jesus looks so sad. And he does like a crucifix oh. thing. Like, mm, 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 sad Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. It's just, it's some of the hammiest shit. It's too much. Mm -hmm. It's too much ham, man. My sodium levels were skyrocketing with all this ham. And for some reason, the daughter has to get involved. They have a big old shootout. Gina Gershon gets killed here, and she's like, take care of our son. And, you know, that's <laughs> We've had some good times, too. <laughs> let me kiss you. <laughs> Quick, let me suck your tongue. And the daughter shows up, and now it's the... She's got the gun. Who and are you like, going to shoot? Who are you gonna, listen to me. Oh, by the way, we haven't talked about the voice modulator. Oh, man. Oh, man. When they do the face surgery, they're like, oh, well, I don't even sound anything like him. That, yeah, because that's the one thing we're worried about. Yeah, that's the real problem. It's not the fucking 40-year-old beer gut sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, here's yeah, the 12-year age difference and the 40-year-old beer gut. <laughs> you were in Saturday Night Fever. That, Nicholas Cage in fucking high school. <laughs> You're totally right. I didn't even think of that either. You're totally right. So he he's like, oh, you know, you put this little voice modulator in your in your throat. It's super sensitive. Even a sharp sneeze could break this thing. And he's getting neck chopped this entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another neck chop. How oh, did it not get chopped? <laughs> so many neck chops. Oh, another neck chop. How did it not get fucked up during all the rough sex? Yes, exactly. When the choking goes on. <laughs> totally. Oh, yeah. I want you to choke me. Oh, wait, never mind. Not this time. And, you know, he he breaks the, the modulator at this point. He's like, listen to your father. Listen to me. And she's, like, doing the thing. Of, like, she him. shoots him anyway. She shoots Nicolas Cage. In the arm. Right. Uh, doesn't slow down this action scene one bit. Nope. Something, something. Boat chase. <laughs> Where on oh. earth is this boat chase coming from? It's coming from heaven because this is the <laughs> best part of the I mean, listen, this is this is a solid three star movie for action sequences alone. Sure. And this boat sequence is one of I'll the most impressive things I've ever seen. Tell you the best part of this boat sequence is this the lead up to it. We get <laughs> flabby John Travolta running down this dock. <laughs> And then he just pulls out this machine gun and shoots a random guy sitting on his own private speedboat. Oh, yeah. Out and of my way. Yeah. And his body flies off into the water. And then he just <laughs> takes the boat. That's my favorite part of the movie. And s somehow, like, the boat dock explodes. Because yeah. everywhere you're going, things are blowing up. Yeah. He shoots back at it and, like, happens to hit some, like, f I don't know. Gasoline factory? Yeah. <laughs> Jet fuel that they were storing at the docks. <laughs> that wouldn't so, melt steel, though, Eric. That's, no, it that's wouldn't. The problem. That's true, but but luckily the dock is made of wood, <laughs> rickety old wood. Um, also, this is where 
you know you've got a really tricky action sequence when the filmmakers are not given a fuck about covering up the stunt doubles. Oh man, these guys are this is their moment to shine. Dude, John Travolta and Nick Cage did not even show up for the week they were <laughs> filming this thing. You get a couple of the close-ups of them driving boats, that's about it. These yeah. two stunt doubles look nothing like them and nobody cared. I thought there was another face-off going on. <laughs> It's like, wait a second. Now, who are these gentlemen? <laughs> Brock Hammersley and Slab Hard Apple. Oh, ab- <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> they are just not. I mean, also like stuntmen slash like porn stars, probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are some handsome looking guys. No they offense did, to stunt doubles. They did. They did the fa- the cock off afterwards. That's <laughs> you can find it. So you know. Whatever. The boats, they, they wind up on one boat. The boat runs ashore. They go flying. The boat blows up. And they're on the beach. We get some hand to hand. And then yeah, what, the good guy shoots the bad guy with a harpoon gun. <laughs> John Travolta gets harpooned in this movie. Yeah. Which I, is pretty good. And then he's like <laughs> saying how, like, well, you're going to have to look at my, like, you have to think of me whenever you look at your face. Oh, right. Because he starts trying to cut up his He's own cutting face. himself with, a, like, a piece of rusted metal. But what's hilarious is instead of, like, just cutting all over and really fucking it up, he's cutting exactly where the surgeon would need <laughs> yeah, to cut yeah, the face off in the first place. What, are you helping him? <laughs> <laughs> Let me give this back to you. It's stupid. It it's stupid. really, really dumb. Oh, and... When when the boys were running down to the docks, there's a quick shot of Joan Allen being like, hello, Margaret Cho. Yes, it's Joan Allen. Yeah. So that's the only thing. So then, like, the FBI shows up, and there's, like, another guy who's, like, sort of a character but not really comes yeah. down, and he's like, Archer, you okay? And he's talking to Nicolas Cage, and it's like, what did you call me? With John Travolta's voice, which is always really weird. Yeah, they never quite pull that off. No. And, you know, the thing is, like, you call me and say that, like, oh, my boss is actually this criminal, and then that... It's going to take me a week to buy this story. No, exactly. Everyone's yeah. going, he's going to jail for a while. Yeah. yeah. He's going to oh, cool yeah. his heels in a jail cell. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do some blood tests. We'll figure this shit out. But in this case, it's already... Don't worry, we've got our best, quote, best doctors from D.C. flying in for this. What are they doing, face-offs at D.C.? A left and right. Dude, it's for all the politicians to replace the reptilian faces. You're with... right. Yep, that, that's what that means. Oh, God, they're all fucking fake. <laughs> Future case file, dude, right there. Definitely. <laughs> so the best doctors from D.C. come in. And then this, again, is such... It's such overdramatic horseshit that makes no sense. So it's like Joan Allen is home cleaning up the kitchen or something's going she on. She wouldn't bother going to her own husband's face-off surgery. I, I, and, and she sees the shadow walking behind the curtain and you're Everyone's like... dressed in white like angel. Totally. You see that gut so you know it's John Travolta. You know, and he comes around the corner and it's John Travolta and I was like... Why are you not picking him up from the hospital? Did he drive himself home? Because, listen, after a face-off surgery, you're not driving. You're not supposed to drive after you get your fucking wisdom teeth taken out. You know what would be great if he's coming home and it's all angelic and white and his fucking bags are on the front porch? Yep. You know why? Because you're not coming back in this house, pal. Glad you got your face back. Now get the hell out of here. Mm, exactly. I've already evicted our daughter. I'm going to burn this house down with every known family photo. This family's closed for business erased from existence it's he should come back and it's like a ghost town (laughs) everyone's gone tumbleweeds yeah the yeah exactly the doors and windows are open and they let nature go to it you know (laughs) there's a goat eating a can in the middle of the living room how could you ever bounce back from this you know how you steal a kid and then make up for your dead kid because they cut like joan allen's giving him a hug dominique swain comes in she's noticeably not dressed goth in this because she's cute yeah, yeah, she's been cured. Exactly, exactly. And then he's like, oh, by the way. And he like, <laughs> s- like just sashays a little bit. And this little kid comes in. Got a new Michael. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's Michael too, like a cat. <laughs> We're going to name you Michael too, like our replacement cat. And he's just like, oh, this is Adam. He needs a place to stay. Oh, geez. And then like. The girl, you know, Dominic Swain, like, kneels down and she's like, hi, I used to be a goth girl. Let's go play in the living and room. she gives him the weird the, Scientology hello, which yeah, is totally. the face thing. Wow. <laughs> you know, like, the indicator in her palm scans his brain yeah. or whatever this family's greeting. It's a real nanu nanu situation. <laughs> wow. Okay, he's clean. He's not a robot. Let him in. 
And then he looks up at, he looks up at Joan Allen like, oh, is this cool? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Oh, I wouldn't tell. Oh, so- sorry, little boy. You'll have to sleep in the street tonight. Yeah, totally. You know what? My husband didn't ask me about this. You get the hell out of my house. I figured it'd be cool because you already uh, fucked his dad. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's kind of like our son. This is Eskimo Brothers the movie, huh? <laughs> yeah. It sure is. It's like, it could have came out of you. <laughs> it's stupid. She's like, okay, okay. Oh, my God. It's so wonderful. Replacement kid. End credits. It's outrageous. That whole acceptance of this kid is more unbelievable than face-off surgery. Even if she was <laughs> open to the idea of this replacement kid. The very idea that he would presumptively bring him home would throw that right in the garbage. You know what I mean? Like, Well, maybe there's a backup here. Maybe it's like, we'll bring this kid, and if you don't like it, you can shoot him. (laughs) Follow up. Eye for an eye, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true. We'll get the corpse of uh, Nicolas Cage and put him out on a merry-go-round, and you can shoot this kid. But follow-up question. So... Okay, he gets this face back on surgery, sure. right? He heals up. They laser him back together. He's Wolverine, so it takes seconds. Totally. Where has this child been through all of that? N- who knows? Right? Because, uh, yeah. like, the last time we see this kid, it's at the coked-out hideout Yep, an hour ago in this movie. Yep. Someone's taken that kid somewhere. So you're telling me that before John Travolta comes home to greet his family again... He stops off at some orphanage and makes sure to grab this kid from social services. Yeah, that or I'm sure, I'm sure they're in the seven hour cut of Face Off. <laughs> There's a cut scene of this kid like living at Margaret Cho's house. <laughs> He's like the kid from Dick Tracy. <laughs> You're yeah. totally right. Maybe there's a side adventure. Maybe Margaret Cho and this kid in between this nab the mad aciter. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. That case is still wide open. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you ever watch Hoarders when, you know, the, the whole thing ends and then, like, there's a little scroll at the end about the aftercare specialist and oh, everyone's that... going to aftercare, which is like therapy after this. Hor- oh, hey, that's, after that's, a that's... TV show comes into your house. And ruins your <laughs> life. You know, that's the thing. That's kind of like, that's the payoff. You don't win money, you win, like, therapy. Oh, okay. That's the end of, th- of Face Off. A little scroll about the aftercare specialist working <laughs> with the archers, <laughs> figuring this shit out. I could have, you know, even like, where are they now? Like freezing, like Animal House. <laughs> I would love that too. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Right, Dominic Swain. She became a tour guide at Universal Studios. Yep. Yeah. Ask for Goth Girl. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and John Travolta is the senator or something. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Bluto. And Castor Troy is still rotten, and they show his corpse because it's rotting now. It's still just stuck to that fucking dock with the harpoon. They just cut the face off and left the body. <laughs> and they sh- they have a, a shot of his team. It's like, his team learned his lesson and stopped mouthing off at work after that guy got his brains blown out. <laughs> Unfortunately, most of the team was dead at this point, so Margaret Cho <laughs> just learned to shut up. <laughs> Margaret Cho and the other guy. Or they treat yeah. Margaret Cho like, was it Niedermeyer? And it's just like, she died in Iraq. Because <laughs> right here, isn't the Animal House, yeah. one guy's like, died in Vietnam. No, yeah, I think Niedermeyer does die in Vietnam. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's MIA in, yeah. in, in Nam, yeah. Um, would anybody recommend Face Off? Oh, big time. It's a lot of fun. I mean, like, you feel the length of this movie. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like, it's a fun, stupid watch. I mean, like, the action scenes are great. You know, I could really write three pages on all of the problems. Like, what about the teeth? What about the actual eyes that are different? Listen, I'm I waiting. expect a chapter alone on the cocks. <laughs> I'm waiting for this BuzzFeed article. Dude. <laughs> all the JPEG. I would recommend this. I think it's a ton of fun. I've seen it like 20 goddamn times at least. Oh, easily. yeah. Yeah. You know, no, this I... is it, 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 90s Eric Sisko. Oh, this is a modern classic. <laughs> I would hate us fat people for yelling about it, too. I mean, I had a lot of fun with this. I've definitely seen this movie at least 25 mm-hmm. times. Yep. But I had not seen it in ages. So the last time I watched it, yeah, it was like, fuck yeah, face off. This time it was like, eh, the action's good. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It is. It's stupid as hell. It's a lot of fun. We're sitting here watching it. You know, My wife comes home. She's like, 
you're watching this for an episode, right? <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, but I'd be watching it anyway. Sure, I watched. Off, I mean, did everybody watch their own DVD? No, I do not own this. Oh, I streamed I, it on Netflix. I don't own it either, probably because I have it committed to memory. <laughs> <laughs> You just scanned the memory banks? Yeah, I just like close my eyes and I'm like, begin, face off. Well, I'll tell you this, though. Like, I'm rewatching this. I can't tell you the last time I watched Broken Arrow. No. Nope. I saw Wind Talkers once in theaters. It's terrible. I saw Paycheck in theaters. That's fucking terrible. This is John Woo's. I, I don't know. The Hard Target's Hard Target? a lot of fun. Yeah. I, it's really close. I've definitely seen Face Off way more than Hard Target, yes. though. Well, I've only Ditto. seen Face Off, uh, Hard Target as an adult, which... I kind of like Hard Target more as an adult. It's a little shorter. Oh, it's... I mean, I think Hard Target's under 100 minutes. Yeah, which... <laughs> and Lance Henriksen's kind of amazing in it. Yeah, that's... And, and you got Brimley with a mo... I, I think Edge oh. Hard Target. I gotta... Mm, you might be right there. That's tough. I mean, I think that's something to solve for another day. That's Face Off from 1997, directed by the great John Woo. If you want to get a hold of us, check us out on our website, whmpodcast.com. Check out all the other great shows on the Sideshow channel, sideshownetwork.tv. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We're at WHM Podcast. Right into the mailbag, we all hate movies at gmail.com. John Woo's biggest success stories? Let us hear your opinion about them. Rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you get it. We would greatly appreciate it. Check out our merch store, whmpodcast.spreadshirt.com. Yeah, we got a Probably Secundus shirt up there. Hot Ooh, seller, uh, that hot, Probably Secundus it's shirt. It's probably our number one seller. At the Cambridge show, we saw a ton of them. It, it was, was like great. a sea of Probably Secundus. It was awesome. We need to get some more. We're going to get some more designs coming, coming up really soon. Uh, give us ideas because they're free. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, right. if you do if you do give us an idea for a shirt and we use it, we will definitely get you that free t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, you can have a copy of your own shirt. Um, all right, so clue for next week's episode. And this is, am I right? Is this the big two hundredth episode? It's the two hundredth oh, episode. Well, you know, let's. Why don't we just say what people will expect it to be, and just say Jim Belushi? Yeah, you're totally and right. Just say, you know what? That's a still storied filmography there's a lot going on there it's unmined it is unmined <laughs> um or do we want to keep it more vague i don't know no no i mean jim belushi's fine i'll say some things that it's not it's not homer and eddie yep it's not all right so what else is it not each do one. Oh, uh it is not the palermo connection oh yeah and unfortunately palermo connection's not an episode it is not retroactive, but it is. A, that is a stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> That's the time travel one. Yeah, that that is a movie wherein people are tr- are using time travel basically in a way to e- e- elude an evil Jim Belushi. Oh yeah, so it's not any of those, but it's a Jim Belushi movie. Two hundred episodes and no end in sight, and it's all because of the folks that listen to the show. So next week we'll be thanking you for that. All four of us will be on. So until then, when we're celebrating two hundred episodes of this nonsense. I'm Andrew Jupin. Eric Siska. Steven Zadak. Take it easy. Take it easy.